so we've just stopped at a service station just from Tuscany which is another place that we are going to on our way up but we're making our way down to Rome we've done about three hours and um, we've got like about two hours and 20 minutes left on this road before we get to our campsite but we're stopping for something to eat guys also it's the first service station that we've checked into and you put your petrol in or your diesel in and then you've got a person that's waiting there and then you pay the person so that's our first experience with that so that was interesting but i'm going to show you what we're having for lunch so we've got the kids just sitting here on this curb right do you want to give everybody a plate sean so we've got like a pizza we've got a mozzarella pastry thing enjoy guys This is the living room. This is the kitchen. The sink. Shower. Bit on the small side. Twin bedroom. Another twin bedroom. Toilet. And then double bedroom. And then this is another bathroom, like grand suite. Does it have another shower? Yeah, with another shower. So this one is a Euro camp, just 25 minutes from Rome. Uh, this one only costs us like 102 euros, so really, really cheap. Excuse the dirty coleslaw on the side of my lip. I get them when like I've been stressed. Anyways. <laughs> We also bought a little welcome pack as well. Um, I think welcome packs are like only 10, 10 euro. But I'll double check for you guys and let you know. Uh, I'll show you what you get in there. So this is one of the welcome packs. So you get two bottles of water, a red wine, a white wine, some pretzels, some olives, two olive oils, some cherry, some jam, um, I think it's spread, is it? Orange, I think you add this to water, so it makes like orange juice and like a forest fruit one. We've got some coffee and then like sugar, um, salt, pepper. What else do we have? Tea bags, I think, in there. And then in your little clean kit, you've got a roll of toilet roll. Um, washing up liquid, multi purpose cleaner, sponge, black bag, and a cloth. So, after a long drive from northern Italy to the centre of Rome, we unpacked all of our clothes and then hopped back in the van to go and get tonight's food. We took the drive through these Italian suburbs to go and find our local store. It was just so nice to see how other people live in different parts of the world. So we just took the time just to absorb the area and enjoy what we've seen. So for tonight's tea we're having some of these Italian barbecue skewers. We're just going to put them in the oven. This one didn't come with a barbecue. We're going to have it in some of these wraps with lettuce. We've got a cucumber, we've got some lettuce, we've got some hummus. Felicity saw this in the shops and she was like, Mum, can I have this? This is five viewers for a bush. <laughs> then we've got um, deli meat to go in a sandwich with mozzarella and tomatoes that we got from the Goda. And look at these olives, guys. 
these were 189 euros and they look absolutely massive they look really really nice so far guys we have found that Lidl's is better than Aldi's I don't know if that's because we went to the Aldi's in France and Lidl's in Italy but we will be trying a Aldi out in Italy so we can compare the two but so far Lidl has so much more variety um, just we struggle to find food in the Aldi in France so guys we're currently just at some traffic lights about five minutes away from parking outside of Rome uh, and we've just had a person come up to us haven't we Logan <laughs> trying to sell us I think with some tissues and leaflets and we we'll put the window up and we're like no no <laughs> Um, but the roads are crazy here. Oh, he's doing a U-turn. Just Come go on. for it. Let's go, buddy. I'll follow you. Right, so I was in the wrong lane there, wasn't that? It was left lane. I need to yeah. be... Straight ahead first. Centre, or do you think right? Yeah, middle. Continue on via yeah. Ostensa for 800 metres. Two lanes. I think I'm going to stay on the right side. Yeah, stay on the um, right side for now. Cause... That sat-nav was definitely looking at we had to go left, but I think if we stay in the right lane, and then we're going to have to move into the left lane about 500 metres or further up. Yeah, definitely. Um, but yeah, we're five minutes away from parking. We're parking like half an hour from the Colosseum just because they have a like no clean air zone around Rome. Um, so we found a secure parking lot because we're looking on not park for night. We're just looking online, weren't we, for our park? We're just looking at spot. all the reviews because um, we wanted to read all the reviews and that and stuff about like whether. They would be safe basically yeah, sorry, and it was and it was saying that um that car park that we originally chose wasn't very safe and that there was a lot of robins so we're not going to park in that car park um but you've got to be careful guys when you're in rome because it is known for pickpocketers and people trying to sell you stuff and things like that but we'll catch it up when we're walking through rome because our next stop is the Colosseum. buongiorno good morning guys Welcome back to our vlog. We have managed to get parking. As you guys can see why we've taken off the tents. We would not have been able to get security, secured parking. So it's all run by security. We actually got guided to our spot. That's how secure the parking is. It's a little bit more expensive, but if you're going to cheap it, you'll take the risk. I've seen so many van life as parking, like just, you know, like get some cheap parking or some free parking. And then the van's being broken into. Not something I want to take the risk with, especially on our first Italian holiday. So you can see how tight this is. Just check this out. I don't know if picking it up. Oh yeah, look, we'll pick it up around here, guys. We are literally, guys, millimeters, millimeters of not making it. Uh, I think that's due to the fire extinguisher or something that is. But we're here. We've got parking. We're a half an hour walk away from the Colosseum, which is great. Um, I think it's about 27 pounds for all day, or 27 euros. So, I'm gonna lock the van up, we're gonna get walking. So, the original Colosseum is here, this part here, that it was built. Um, but they reconstructed it on this side over here, as you can see the brickwork's a little bit different. So we've just got a green sticker guys and we are now entering the Roman Colosseum guys. This has been a dream on my list for so so long. We are literally standing in history where gladiators have stood. Um, I'll tell you guys a little bit of history about it when we're inside. So guys we've just checked into the Roman Colosseum. Now they need to see your tickets that you booked online and your passport as well. And now we're heading into the Colosseum itself, which I think is this way. And I must say, it feels pretty good <laughs> to have a little bit of shade here in these arches. But um, wow, it feels unreal to actually be here, guys. That's how, that's how it feels. But you cannot come to Rome and not do the Roman Colosseum.
are now in the arena and just walking around it just makes me think like what it would have been like thousands of years ago standing in this arena as a gladiator battling for your life and they also were able to fill the arena with water um, and have battleships in the arena so you think of all the animals that died here as well and you think of all of the gladiators that did um, it's just you're just in awe when you're in the middle of it when you're standing here and you're just looking around you just get that impressive feeling like wow this was like one time just packed with people and how many people fought for their lives and battled against wild animals and it's just you're standing in history you cannot come to Rome and not do the Roman Colosseum it's just it has to be done um, Stephanie's got the uh, like tour guide on her phone I'll turn you guys around and show you guys what she's doing so Sean's got Stephanie's glasses on I know a bit of history about these by the way so the reason why they're missing all the noses is when Rome was conquered they cut off all the noses off the statues and that's why the noses are no longer there you'll see every statue in Rome or in Italy in fact with no nose so I was having a look at the full construction of the Colosseum and it just passed my mind to think about any army that went against the Roman Empire and if you lost on the battlefield and got caught as a prisoner you'd be probably taken to the Colosseum to fight in the gladiator rings for their entertainment um, so the staff fought alone would probably strike fear into you to even want to go to war with the Roman Empire um, you can see why they conquered the world for I mean that, the architecture is just absolutely stunning so fun fact guys when we went to Wales and we went to the gold mine in South Wales we were told that the Romans um, the excavation of that gold mine was much deeper than the Victorians the Victorians couldn't go as deep as the Romans and they were wanting um, donations and stuff to get a drone to go down and see how far the Romans actually went far down into the um, earth to get the gold so you can see how advanced they were in their technology and just their infrastructure in general we were talking about the lions and all of the wild animals that they had here to fight in the gladiator games and you would have to think about a bit like a, like a large zoo like operating a large zoo how many animals would it have taken for them to feed the wild animals it's just it just blows my mind how much has went into this and we're here now as a family standing in history and mosquito on my leg standing in history um, first day in Rome and uh, we're inside of the most beautiful part of history I've ever stood in guys um, I've always wanted to visit Stonehenge and other places like that um, and things like that but I mean this just tops it I think this is unless I visit the pyramids or the Great Wall of China at the moment this is the top number one for me it's just stunning they also do another experience it's called the underground um, the attic and then this is just the full tour that we've got here so honestly guys trying to book this you have to book it in advance because they sell out really quick and if you try to get the attic um, you have to look like every day basically every day we looked for weeks and weeks and weeks on the build up to our trip so at the gift shop you've got the Colosseum 2,800 euros and then we've got the chariot 3,000 800 euros um, pretty cool I've just offered to buy 70 some earrings but there's none you like really is it? no you sure <laughs> I want to get a those ones there for say about 70 euros or the green ones at the back for 135 but she wasn't interested um, but yeah anyways nice little gift souvenir for when you get back home so we have now arrived at a place called Palantine Hill I believe it's the most oldest part of Rome so we're just going to walk around and have a look at all of the ancient monuments that have been left behind by the Romans that the current Romans have then maintained and kept, preserved and uh, now we're here just exploring it so it's going to walk around and see what it's all about It's one of the famous seven hills that are in Rome So as we explore the famous Roman Forum we have some important significant structures such as the Arch of Titus, the Temple of Saturn, also located here in the Roman Forum as the oldest ever Roman road made in history.
Palatine Hill was the birthplace of the first Roman Emperor, Augustus. So after leaving guys, it is seriously really crowded. Um, but we're going for a slice of pizza now. Stephanie's got some lovely restaurants and takeaways to go and visit in Rome. Um, so we're going to show you guys some of the best food that Rome has to offer. on our list is to visit the Pantheon guys but seriously there's a huge queue and this is the Pantheon and this is the queue and I think last year it was actually free and they've started charging people for it so guys we've just been waiting in the queue about halfway for the Pantheon behind me and then we got to about 10 people in front of us and they took the ticket machines away so we were thinking eh hey, what's going on but apparently they're sold out until tomorrow so we're not gonna do it we're basically not gonna be able it's to do it not like we're leaving Rome tomorrow where yeah. are we gonna wait to Tuscany tomorrow but at the same time it wasn't the biggest attraction in the whole of Rome we've done the biggest attraction the Colosseum yeah. but it was kind of up there with some of the other things that we've got planned but one thing I will say though is that you can buy tickets online now I didn't know that some members buy tickets in advance so then you're not waiting in the queue and you get like let down that's if you like got this the like if the pantheon was a thing that you really 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 want to visit but for us we weren't really too bothered on it were we we looked at it and we were like yeah we want to go but if we can't fit it in on our trip then we're not too bothered at the same time well but with the coliseum we had a book in about a week and a half advance i was saying uh, just for the like full experience if you want to do the attic or if you want to do the um underground you have to book at least three weeks and i was checking every single day for them but the thing with the attic is only do groups of uh, eight so when i was trying to book it we could only get like two or three max so then obviously that was no good so that's why we didn't do that for anyways we're gonna head to our next location so this is the place we're going for our sandwich today and the queue goes all the way around here it just goes on and on and on and on and on and on. This queue is probably longer than the flipping queue for the Pantheon. And that's how you can tell it's good. But we don't know until we try. I said this queue is longer than the one for the Pantheon. For the flipping <laughs> Pantheon, yeah. <laughs> It's supposed to be a really good place to have like one of the Italian sandwiches. Yeah, yeah. But we'll let you know. And number one. Lovely. Thank you. It's good. Oh, brilliant. So we've just got our sandwiches, got a place to sit. These look so, so good. Um, we basically went for the chef's recommendation. He said, do you trust what I have to recommend? I was like, yeah. Because at the end of the day, we don't know anything about sandwiches. They know everything about it. So that's what we did. We got free. Um, as you know, we're just doing like a bit of a food vlog. We're just walking through Rome. We've got pasta later on. We've just had like some pizza before. Um, so yeah, let's get stuck into these. Um, we've also grabbed the beer each as well. They're Italian beer. It's called Bernona. What's it called? This is a, it's called here. Yeah. Crunch on that bread. It definitely had the crunch factor. You good? Oh, do you have to What did you think of the sandwich? I know you haven't finished, but you've had a good couple of mouthfuls. Yeah, very nice. Come on, Caleb, we know you're feeling really tired. <laughs> Caleb broke his leg. Caleb, you need a little nap. <laughs> Why do you feel so tense? I feel like a tense. Come on. Oh, okay. Is that fun, Caleb? Oh, must be funny. <laughs> right, so Stephanie's take went to another huge queue again. Uh, this is another ice cream parlor. Uh, what do they call it over here, Stephanie? Is it a Giletto or something? Giletto. Giletto, is it? Ice cream, simple thing, yeah. Uh, the queue is massive. It goes all the way down there, it does. Wow. Who is this one for? Wow, look at this, Khaleesi. Look what you got, you. Wow. 
Hold it. Big lick. A yummy. Is it nice? Hold it up. Hold up straight like that. Okay. What do you guys go for? Um, we went for a chocolate chip. And Hold it up straight because it'll fall off. I'm pretty sure. I don't know what the other one's called, but we went for a chocolate chip and another one. And mum went just for the ice cream with the chocolate over, yeah? Yes. Cool. Nice. Keep it up straight. Keep it up straight like that, okay? Okay. Right, what do you guys go for? Um, mint chocolate, mint chocolate chip, and dark chocolate. Dion? Coffee and dark chocolate. Cool. Can you believe? What is it, six? Yeah. Five ice creams, 12.50. No way, 12.50, yeah, that's pretty good. That is a really good that's a 10 pound. Oh, 10 pound. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's just moved to Italy for the ice cream, shouldn't we? <laughs> That's a really good price for ice cream. Have you seen that one with the chocolate on top? Yeah, you got to hold it up right. You want to give mummy a taste? Yeah, so you can go for dark chocolate or white chocolate on the top. Oh. Never did that in England, did they? Put chocolate over it. No, that is proper chocolate. That's perfect. visiting the Almaty coastline but we came across an Almaty store and we've been dying to try this lemon sherbet ice cream and uh, we have for the Perino but it's like a lemon flavor I really can't put my finger on it what it tastes like it tastes a little bit like a cider like a beer at the same time but it is beer but yeah it tastes so good and then we bought some Almaty like a Baileys, like a Baileys and then an like Almaty like, like kind of spirit kind of thing as well and yeah. a fan this is the famous Toribi fountain. Oh, look at the flipping crowds, guys. It is rammed, absolutely rammed. And look if you can get a picture. So we've managed to get down the steps and to the actual fountain itself. It is literally crowded like you don't know what. And it's like gone like half seven now, but can you get some pictures of the kids and stuff? Check out this, guys. You've got to leave some fun over there, don't yeah, you? Um, it's unfortunate, like, there's always good excuse to come back for, for next time, isn't it? Yeah, but I've absolutely loved Rome. It's been amazing, guys. 